emisión.net Hello again and welcome to Letter from England, broadcasting for AC Press and the Spanish Evangelical Alliance. Are children getting in the way of your career? Six out of ten Spanish women think having a child would prove an obstacle to their careers. Eight percent say that becoming a mother would lead to discrimination at work, while 21 percent agree that maternity would threaten their chances of promotion. Well, these are some of the conclusions drawn from a survey of 10,000 women carried out last year by the Centre for Sociological Research. 28% of professionals who are mothers said they had to reduce their hours, and a further 28% had to interrupt their career, as they put it, for at least a year, while another 17% gave up their jobs to look after their children. Almost two-thirds of those interviewed believed that the ideal family model would be one in which both parents had jobs that occupied a similar amount of time, whereby they could share the task of looking after their children equally. However, in real life, only 47% of them said they had experienced such a model, though even that may seem high to some. The older the woman, the less the family situation corresponded to this ideal. An even greater generational difference is the number of younger women who live with their partners without getting married. 90% of the over 45s did not live together until they got married, but this figure drops to 60% of those aged between 30 and 34, and falls below 40% amongst those aged between 25 and 29. Well, apart from the uh, issue of uh, domestic uh, organisation and the whole area of working women and working mothers, sure, it's rather sad that children might be considered to get in the way of a career. And uh, whilst one would not uh, want anyone to be discriminated against at work, uh, the idea of that a child could prove an obstacle to anything is rather sad, uh, when uh, having a child uh, ought to be a great blessing. From a Christian perspective as well, coming up to the time of Easter, the whole question of self-sacrifice comes to mind. Uh, having a child, of course, does uh, involve giving up other things. It involves much time, much effort, uh, but also can be very rewarding uh, as one's uh, parents, that is, love uh, for their child, uh, is also reciprocated. And also there's, of course, a, a parallel between uh, what Jesus did at Easter and uh, family life. The idea of giving up uh, one's own uh, prospects, in Jesus' case, of course, giving up his glory uh, in some respect, giving up uh, so much for us. Surely we can learn a lesson from that. And as we approach Easter again, it's a great opportunity to reflect on the self-sacrificial giving of Christ uh, for us, how he lived an obedient human life uh, despite all manner of pressures and temptation, those common to us, uh, and those uh, extra ones uh, put upon him because of, of being the Son of God, the particular attacks from Satan, and then, of course, going to the cross and dying in our place so that we might be forgiven. That's a great message, uh, not just at Easter, of course, uh, but uh, every day of the year, every day of our lives. And as we look at Christ, particularly at this Easter time, and think again of his sacrifice for us on our behalf, uh, perhaps that will give us greater strength uh, to give of ourselves to others, uh, to our children, to our spouses, to our families, but also to our friends and our neighbours. As Jesus has loved us, so we should love one another. And I pray that at this Easter time, uh, the message of sacrifice, the message of forgiveness and reconciliation, of course ultimately salvation, uh, would be one that we would all experience and rejoice in. Thank you again for listening to Letter from England, broadcasting for AC Press at emission.net each week. Goodbye. Emisión.net